Howdy, this is David Gross, your Texas tax and law man. We're back talking about starting your own business. Today, we look at the next step. After you've made your plans, counted the cost, sought wise counsel, the only thing left is to run the race. I use the term run the race because it conjures up all the visual images of the pressure of the starting line. In my mind, I picture a motocross race, ripping, roaring, and ready for the whole shot. You're on the line, front wheel pressed against the gate, hand heavy on the throttle, motor screaming, weight shifted forward, leaning on the tank so it won't flip over, the pipe ripping out the staccato, vroom, 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 vroom. You look right and left and everybody's game on. And then the gate drops and you launch forward, front wheel climbing, back wheel spinning and a rooster tail flying out behind. Man, the race is on. You have to charge hard and give it all you've got to make it the first one to the corner. You make that turn, you win the whole shot, and start out in first place. What an adrenaline ride. Well, that's exactly what your business is like. You've done everything you can to prepare. Now it's time to put your money where your mouth is and go to work. Like a championship coach, I wanna encourage you to plan your work and work your plan. Today, let's hit eight essential things you should do as you run the race. First, pick a name. I know this sounds simple, but lots of people build their whole plan and never once think about what they want to call it. The Fifth Avenue marketing gurus love one-word names like Apple, Intel, or Walmart. What they like even better is a graphical icon that represents their brand, like the window symbol, the Starbucks mermaid, or the Apple logo. While that's great for a publicly traded business with a huge advertising budget, that's not what a small, owner, small business owner needs. You need a name that is conceptual and descriptive. By conceptual, I mean something that conjures up an idea about the quality, nature, or big idea. By descriptive, I mean tell the client what your company is. A good illustration would be the handy home repairs, or legacy quilts, or fast fleet trucking. All of these names tell the customer what it is and something about the business. Two, check your name. When you pick a name, remember lots of other people run small businesses. You need to check and see if the domain or website you want is available. You also need to check with the lawyer to see if that name is available in the state you're in or if you want a federal trademark, if it's available at the patent office. Third, you need to create your LLC. If your business involves selling a product, hiring employees, or entering into large contracts, then you need to establish a limited liability company to protect your assets from the new business liabilities, and vice versa, protect your business assets from your personal liability. If you need help with this, give us a call. We help dozens of people create LLCs every year in multiple states. Shoot us an email and we'll send you information about our turnkey LLC package that includes everything you need to set up your company, open a bank account, and start doing business. And most importantly, our package includes our tax and legal advice for maximizing wealth, minimizing taxes, and protecting your loved ones and assets. Yes, you can do it yourself online, but you usually wind up with several disconnected pieces that do not give you the best tax or legal results not those that you were hoping for, and they may not even satisfy your bank, your lender, or your investor. Fourth, secure your domain. Use a firm like powerpipe.com or godaddy.com to reserve your domain, which is your official business address on the internet. You'll eventually want to build out the website as a corporate brochure for all the world to see, but to begin, you need to secure the domain. Five, Set up a bank account. If you have us create your LLC, we will send you all the documents you need to open a bank account and start doing business. If you're going to do it yourself, check with your bank first to make sure you have all the documents you need to open your account. Sixth, obtain your licensing. Depending on your state and your business, this should be the very first thing you check. In most cases, people do not go into a business without the knowledge and expertise to do the business, so forgive me for repeating the obvious here. 
But if you want to open a restaurant, you need to register the, with the health department and you need to apply with the Alcohol Beverage Commission in your jurisdiction to get a license if you want to sell adult beverages. This can be a long and difficult process. This is true for any type of lending or financial background business where the capital requirements or background checks are extensive. Number seven, don't quit your day job. If you are currently a W-2 employee providing for your family, don't quit your day job until you give your small business a test run. I usually recommend starting it on the side and testing it on nights and weekends, making sure you like it. This may take a month, six months, or a year. Take time to test it out and experiment before you jump in with both hands and both feet. If that's your only option, well, come on in. The small business water feels fine. Eighth, build a productivity matrix. Make a detailed list of the things that you must do every day to complete your business plan. Don't just say, I want 10 sales. Hey, I hope all this talk about starting your small business has inspired you to make your plans, count the costs, seek wise counsel, and now run the race. If you're ready to get started, or if your business is growing so fast the tax man is taking too much of your money, then send us an email. We'd love to help you run the race and win. Till next time, click like and subscribe below. Forward this email to a friend or a burgeoning entrepreneur. We'd love to help them on their way. Adios. Texas Tax and Lawman Legal Disclaimer. Hey, I'm a lawyer. You know I have to have some lawyer mumbo jumbo. This is a general information video, not client attorney privilege information. The content is information only and is not directed to any specific facts or circumstances and cannot be relied upon as a legal opinion, even though that would be nice and save you a trip to the lawyer. If you have a specific legal question, feel free to contact David Gross directly or seek qualified legal or tax counsel in your state of residence, state of mind, or whatever place you call home.